All right, guys, Robbie will be joining us here momentarily. Tonight's attendance, 9,617, 9,617 for a gate of $2,488,000. The fight of the night was Matt Hobar and Sergio Pettis. Performance of the night, Anthony Pettis and Josh Sandman, $50,000. Only one transport tonight, that was Eddie Gordon. He was taken for a precautionary head scan. He is already back, clean bill of health. Go to our first question. It's uh, John Morgan from USA Today. Johnny, Johnny, let's uh, let's get your thoughts. Obviously, it was a very a close fight tonight. Um, you haven't had the, the luxury to go back and watch it yet, but uh, but what did you think? Uh, you know, I thought I did pretty good the first three, fourth round. I started slowing down a little bit, but you know, you can't take nothing away from Robbie. You know, what did I say the whole time? You know, he's a tough fighter. He's a guy that you got to put away. Uh, I wasn't able to do that tonight, and you know. The judges give it to him. You know, what can I do except for come back like he did, pick myself up, and get that belt back? It did seem like it, at one point you kind of resigned yourself to stick it to the wrestling game when the striking was working pretty well for you. Was that strategic or, or were you tiring? Um, you know, what was going on at that point? You know, that was a great question. Uh, I, I was, uh, I just felt it. And then whenever I would feel it, uh, I would engage, but then again, I wasn't trying to get him a takedown. You know what I mean? Uh, that's sort of not my game. You know, my game is the kickboxing, seems like these days. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I was doing really good on the feet, but you know, like I said, he's a tough guy. You know, I threw a lot of kicks, a lot of, a lot of knees, a lot of a little bit of everything. Uh, just didn't get the win. And lastly for you, Johnny, what do you think should come next? I mean, it sounds like Rory McDonald is kind of waiting in the wings. They had kind of already tapped him to be there anyway. Um, do you think it's fair for him to get the next shot, or do you think the right thing to do is put this trilogy together? You know, that's not my call. You know what I mean? Whatever the UFC wants, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Uh, that's my management job, and my coaches, if they want the rematch right now, then we'll do the rematch. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. Anthony, if I could go to you, please. Um, obviously, a fantastic win for you tonight. Um, it seems like you wanted to send a message. It sounded like you, you, know, you were kind of starting to hear the doubters that you've been out for so long. Was, was, was that important to you to kind of silence the critics, and do you feel like you did enough to do that tonight? Yeah, I, I feel like I had a great performance. I mean, Gil's a tough guy. Um, I was expecting a war out there, and uh, you know, he, he delivered. First round was a tough round. Um, I tried to avoid the takedowns um, as best as possible, but uh, I think once I got to the striking range, I, I, I delivered and um, hit him with some good shots, hit him with some, uh, some nice jabs. But... Uh, I mean, I think, I think I did enough to prove that I deserve this belt in front of me. And obviously, you should get to soak it in, enjoy the moment a little bit. But um, Habib Nurmagomedov, before you were here, he's already in the press room somewhere telling everybody that'll listen, hey, he's undefeated. He deserves to be next. Um, obviously, there's a couple big lightweight fights coming up next. What do you think? I mean, he's the undefeated. Is, is, is he what you think should be next? Hey, if, he, if they want him next, give him a shot. I'm ready. I'm, I'm injury free. I feel good. You guys you saw what I did to Gilbert Valendez. If he's next, let's do it. Perfect. Thanks. I just said, yeah, man. Does he speak English? <laughs> I just said, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I said, yeah. So if you're ready in May, I'm ready now. Khabib, last question. <laughs> All right, and just one final one, if I could, for Travis. Obviously, congratulations on your win as well. Um, obviously, tell us how you felt tonight, but I, I have to ask you, there was a little bit of a conversation going on there right at the end. Can you share us the details of, of what went back and forth between you and Brendan there? Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's been a little bit of uh, uh, banter going back between our camp and him. And, you know, when, uh, when I get to know somebody like Coach Edmund and know what kind of a coach he is, but not only that, what kind of a man he is, it, it makes it personal for me. Um, so, you know, at the end, that was between him and I, and, and we'll keep it there. But, you know, he, he came up and he apologized, you know, for, for saying some of the stuff that he did. And, and you know, you can only, you know, what, what do you do from now? So um, it is what it is, but, you know, we're moving forward. Uh, question for Johnny. Right in front of you. You, uh, from just your post-fight comments that, that we get, uh, you know, right off the bat in the email, you, it looked like you were kind of hard on yourself. Did, was there something specific? Did you just not? Were, were you not I didn't, feeling I didn't, well I in didn't there? fight. You know I mean, look at the fourth and fifth round. I just didn't fight. I did really good. <clears throat> didn't come out the fourth and fifth like I normally do. You know what I mean? Uh, it is what it is. You know, I, I'm going to be my worst critic. I don't need you guys. You know what I mean? To sit there and say, "Oh, he looked like shit," or "He looked like this." You know what I mean? Uh, that's my job, um, <clears throat> and 
<clears throat> that's sort of what it was. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't stay light on my feet like I should have. I sort of done a couple other things to to sh- secure my win, but you get lost in the moment, and that happened to me. And I'll be back. I'll be back. I know you're not an excuses guy, but but was there anything about the preparation? Just what, was it a quick turnaround? You did take this fight. You know, it wasn't supposed to be your your date originally. Nah, you know, hey, no, I can't do that. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna take nothing away from Robbie Lawler. Robbie fought good. He deserved to get his hand raised tonight. I just thought I won. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I didn't do it to the judges. You know what I mean? Sometimes, some reason out here in Vegas, I don't get the win. You know what I mean? I, I tried to knock him out, but dude, the guy's got a jaw. You know what I mean? I got a jaw. So whenever it comes down to that, you sort of have to leave it to them. And it just wasn't my night. And then a couple questions for uh, Mr. Duffy. Right in front of you, Todd. Right in front of you. How you doing? <laughs> Congrats on the win. Uh, I mean, it was a familiar result for you. I mean, it's not the first time you've come in and knocked a guy on the first round. Was it, um, you know, a weird question almost. Would you have almost wanted it to go just a little bit longer, spend some time in the cage after such a long layoff? Uh, I mean, you just want to get the win. Um, the cool thing for me was we, uh, he hit me with a right hook. We had that second exchange that I remember, and obviously I haven't seen the fight yet, but we had a second exchange. He hit me with a nice tight right hook above the head, and I felt a little blood trickle down. I saw it. I looked at him, and I saw he had a little blood on his forehead, too, and I, it was exciting to be in a fight. I was like, I was just like, I'm in a fight. This is all, and I, it just felt good. I don't even remember the question, sorry. <laughs> Did I answer it? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I appreciate the response. The question, though, was uh, would you have, in a weird way, wanted the fight to go a little bit longer? Are you pretty happy that uh, it ended I, I was happy to get the win. Just get in there and get the job done and get on the next one. You, and you, uh, getting on to the next one, is that something you want to do pretty quickly? Or are you of asking course. the UFC to, yeah, to get back Yeah, of course. I need to stay busy. Uh, I've had a lot of my career taken away, so I definitely want to get back in there and get busy. Uh, any names come up come up in your head? That's not really my style. I definitely want somebody in the top ten, though. Um, anybody that's trained with me or been around me um, knows I belong in the top ten, so I need to go out there and prove it now. Hey, Johnny, uh, right in front of you, a question for you. Uh, you referenced the fourth and fifth round, but, you know, in the last 90 seconds or so, it seemed when the fight was on the line, you know, Lawler raised his game and landed a couple kicks and punches to you. You didn't, even in that point, fight with a sense of urgency. You know, it seemed like you fought at the same pace you fought the other rounds for. And I'm just curious about that particular <laughs> because, you know, part of the fight. Yeah, because I can't. You know what I mean? I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit there and get in a bang war with Robbie Lawler. You know, we both have the knockout power, but... In my mind, that was the only way he was going to win that fight. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So you stay tight. You don't let anything hit. You keep your eyes open. You move. You're moving. Uh, you, you let the blows glance. Um, and so that's what, that's what I was sort of thinking. He's, he's got to knock me out, you know what I mean, to win. So in that sense, I can't sit there and go, okay, let's bite down the mouthpiece. Now, if I'd have really thought that we had to win that round, then yes, that's a totally different story. But... Uh, you know, it is, it's a numbers game, and I fell short on those numbers tonight. Did you feel you performed better tonight or in uh, the other fight? I mean, you know, uh, definitely tonight. Definitely tonight. Just, just not the fourth and fifth round. Like I said, uh, came out, <clears throat> just didn't do. You know what I mean? Uh, there's, there's a lot of things to be said here. You know, first off and foremost, I need to say that I'm, I feel blessed. You know what I mean? Good Lord blessed me with a great wife, great kids, um, and the fighting. The fight tonight made me learn a lot about myself, a lot about what I need to do, and a lot what I need to correct in my camp, you know. And a lot revolves around walk around at 215, you know. Uh, we're going to try to make a – I'm going to make that decision. I'm going to work with Mike Dolce, stay around 195, you know what I mean, do everything right because I had that belt and I want it back. And I love food, too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> and that's going to be a tough decision, but you know what I mean? I love that belt more than food. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, for the California kid. Uh, Uriah, when they showed you on the screen before you came out, every time you were on, you got a big pop and everything. And then one of the few times in your career, after the fight was over, all of a sudden the crowd was booing you. I mean, did you feel they were booing you, or was it the circumstance, or what was it? Um, I'm a real optimist, so I, I would think it was the circumstance. I, I was... Not happy about that. Uh, in my own, you know, my own opinion, I watched the replay and I did get him in the eye. So, you know, I've I've been a, someone that sees a little bit of weakness and is able to finish. You know, that's 
how I've gotten to the point where I am, and uh, just went on my instincts and got the finish. So, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I think it was more the situation. And what is, you know, do you look back on it and think, you know, you should have, uh, I guess you didn't know you did it. So uh, I was going to say, you know, if you know you did it, do you back off because you poked him or do you wait until the referee says, go? Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess you'd have to understand when, you, when you're in a fight situation, but this is my 12th year as a professional fighter and however many thousands of, of um, hours of training, etc. And it's a very, very instinctual time in there. It's not like I'm like, oh, now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and you're thinking things out. This is an action-reaction uh, sport, and when you're in it as long as I am and you've done, you know, done the training over and over again, you react. And so you know, I don't remember fights for the most part until after I go back and watch them, and I don't remember thinking, oh, I got him in the eye or anything like that. I just thought, yeah, I'm going to get another finish now, and that's what I did. So One more for you, then I want to ask Rob a question. Uh, Phil Brooks was up here, CM Punk, and he talked about his coming into the UFC. You being a guy that's really good at marketing and everything, do you do you resent a guy coming in like that, or do you feel it's good for the sport to bring a a person of his stature? And he's obviously going to sell pay-per-views and do that. I mean, do you, what do you what's your what's your take? First off, I'm a big fan of his, and I think uh, a lot of this fight game, and and again, a lot of the fighters understand this, is so much mental. So if this guy believes that he can get in here and fight and he's willing to put in some work, who's to tell him he's not the baddest dude on the planet? You know, we'll see. It, it, it's a, I've had, you know, a lot of younger fighters that are on my team that go out and have gotten losses and, and have been, you know, felt embarrassed. And, you know, this is the most exposed you'll ever be in any sport. You're going to fight a one-on-one -on -one fight in front of millions of people. Um, so props to the guy for wanting to put his, his uh, you know, his best foot forward, and we'll see. Maybe he's going to be the champ. Thanks, Uriah. Robbie, for you, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations. It was a great performance. Did you think you did enough to win when the, when the fight was over? Did you, uh, did you believe you were going to get it? I did this time. Uh, Johnny's a hell of a fighter. He's tough as hell. And uh, what a fight. What a fight. I feel like I uh, finished strong. I feel like I won the fourth and the fifth. And uh, it was a close fight, man. When you have two guys who are tough as hell going in there and both stingy, Sometimes you get fights like that. That's not how I thought the fight was going to go, and it, maybe we'll do it again sometime. I saw Pat came over to your corner at second or third round and was yelling at you, let your hands go and everything. It seemed like at least maybe in that last 90 seconds you really did that. And I was wondering, you know, kind of was that something that they were in your ear about a lot, let your hands go, get rolling? Yeah, my coaches just wanted me to go out there and finish strong and, uh, and do what I do in the gym. And uh, I was able to do that. Uh, Johnny's a very resilient fighter, and uh, he did a great job tonight. And then the last question for you, and I'll pass this along. Uh, what was, what's your take being the UFC champion through everything you've been through, and you've been through as much as anybody in the in this sport, you know, to have that belt up there now and uh, hear Bruce Buffer call you the champion? What does it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, uh, but it means a lot to me because of all the people around me. This wasn't just me out there. There was a lot of time and effort from a lot of people around me that uh, helped me to get where I am today, and uh, it was it's their victory too. Hey there, uh, Anthony. This is Nathan from Wheaties. I'm here in the back. Just had uh, two questions for you. Um, so with the Wheaties competition and your win tonight, um, you've shown that you're a champion. So I'm just curious, how do you maintain uh, that champion spirit consistently time and time again? Uh, man, last year was a long year for me, man. 15 months off was a long time. And, uh, you know, the Wheaties contest was going on. I had my fight coming up. So this, there was a lot of pressure on me for this, this fight. And, uh, I just feel like uh, I just locked in on, on training, and I, I just uh, fell in love with the sport again, and, and I, I believed in myself, and you know, I performed again to the best of my ability. And along the way, you had a lot of people that were doubting, you know, what was going to happen, and you really showed up tonight. Do you have any lessons that you could share with people about how to respond when people don't believe in you? Um, the, the best way is to prove them wrong. I mean, you, you gotta, you can't really. For me, well, I was injured, so I couldn't really prove myself or, uh, you know, fight. So I had to be quiet and just let them talk. And uh, tonight, I got to, you know, prove everybody wrong. So I think uh, the, the, my, my coach says it the best. The, the best uh, revenge is, ma is massive success, and uh, that's what that's what I'm looking forward to do. And lastly, um, you know, both you and your brother won tonight. Can you take us backstage a little bit with you and your family? How, you know, take us, we'll describe that. 
Um, I haven't seen him yet. Well, I've seen him for a little, he was in my corner. I haven't seen my family though. I haven't seen my mom. I haven't seen my brother, other brother. Um, but uh, it's, it's a big night for the Pettus Bros, man. We both got bonuses, um, great performances for both of us. Um, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy the night and then get back in the gym next week. Congratulations, Anthony. Thank you. Go ahead, Adam. Robbie, for uh, for you, the last time the last time the fight was somewhat similar, uh, in the sense that it was close all the way to the end, and, and he kind of stole it in the end of the fight, uh, in the first fight. Was that going through your mind at all as you got into the fifth round that this was the same thing? It was kind of close, and, and yeah, yeah he, I think it was just go out there and try to finish him. Uh, and, and just try to do everything you can, leave it all in the cage. And uh, that's what I went out there and did. Uh, I was able to stuff a couple takedowns and uh, beat him up a little bit. And uh, he's tough. A question for Gilbert Melendez. Uh, Gil, it looked like, uh, you know, up until the finish that you were having some success. Uh, pressing Anthony against the cage, obviously you'd want to neutralize his kicking game, but having to eat a few shots on the way in to do it, was that part of the strategy? Did you have it in your mind that you were probably going to have to be eating a few shots to, to, to get in close like that? Yeah, I was trying to pressure a little bit. Got a little sloppy and a little too anxiety in there. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to pressure Anthony. I didn't want him to set. And, and even when I didn't pressure, I could see the look in his eye like it was going to come. So I was like, I just better walk forward and, and try to trade a little bit with the punches. But, yeah, that was my intentions. I got a little sloppy out there, but it was a learning experience, and I think I would do some things differently and uh, just look to grow as a fighter from that. A uh, question for Travis Brown. Travis, uh, you've spoken highly of uh, bringing in your new coach, Edmund Tiverdian. He said uh, earlier in the week that he had seen some, some things in your, your game that he wanted to shore up. Can you kind of elaborate in terms of what you guys were, were able to, to tweak together and how those uh, improvements manifested themselves tonight? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we worked on my just my stance. We worked on my distance. Worked on letting my hands go, which I didn't do in the beginning of the fight, which I'm disappointed in. But um, you know, we uh, everything. You know, he just, he's teaching me. He's really teaching me uh, the, the art of fighting in that sense. You know. Um, not just showing me, you know, how to knock somebody out kind of a set, kind of a thing, you know. And, and again, you know, I, I know how the media likes to twist things, and I'm not knocking Jackson and Winkle John because they're amazing coaches, you know. Um, but I really I, I'm able to learn from this man, and, and it's really made a difference, you know. And I look forward to really showcasing my skills in my next fight. I, I did an okay job this fight, but my next one's going to be even that much better. When you were asked earlier about the, the animosity with Brendan Schaub, you referenced the kind of man that, that Edmund Tverdian is as well. And, you know, uh, Ronda Rousey has shown that similar type of, of loyalty with him. She goes back much further than you. But can you elaborate on that and tell us what you mean by, you know, a level of personal respect that you've developed with him? Yeah, and unfortunately, we live in a day and age that there's a lot of shady-ass people out there and people that love to, lay in, love to live in the gray area of, in life. And uh, Edmund is a very black and white kind of person where, um, you know, if you do something you're not supposed to, he will tell you that you did something you, that you weren't supposed to. Um, or the opposite, you know, if you did something good, it'd be like, good job. You know, and it's, it's, very, it's very refreshing to be around a man like that. We'll go to Thank Dan you. and then John. Go ahead. Robbie, a lot of the talk going into this fight was that Rory McDonald would be getting the winner. Uh, there's going to be people calling for sort of a trilogy here. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on what's next? Uh, I can't wait to get back home to my family. It's been a long year. I mean, I've been on the grind, uh, camp to camp, just striving to be champion, get back to this moment, get better every day. And I, I would just like to uh, take some time off, let Dana White, Joe Silva decide those kind of things, and uh, just go home and be a family man for a couple weeks. And then uh, Travis, um, obviously there, Kane and Fabrizio were sort of expected to be fighting each other next. Uh, you're right there for a title shot. Are you looking at the uh, Dos Santos fight on the 13th and thinking that the winner of that might be something for you? Um, yeah, I mean, possi possibly, but you know, as you saw tonight, there's, you know, again, I, I, I'm not a big fan of the rankings because I'm ranked third, but I hate being ranked third because to me, I'm just the third loser in a sport that has one champion. You know what I mean? But um, or one heavyweight champion, sorry. But you know, 
uh, it just it just kind of depends. You know, the the heavyweight division because the interim belt and Kane being hurt is kind of just you know kind of shifty a little bit. So anybody can go in and fight anybody any, any given time. You know, if the champ is not able to make it in June, then who's Verdum gonna fight? You know what I mean? I don't mind that rematch. Please give me that fight back, especially if it's for the belt. I would love it. But if those two are fighting in June, I can't imagine you wanting to wait and nope. spend that much time. Nope. No, I'm not a. I don't. You know, I, I fight for a living, and you know, I want to go out there and scrap a little bit. You know, I'm not trying to just sit on the couch for a year. You know, I want to go out there and earn some money, have bills to pay. For uh, Tony, please. Obviously, a uh, not an easy fight for you by any stretch tonight. Big win. Um, talk about you know, kind of the opening round. Um, you know how how in trouble you really were there, and, and how you felt things were playing out. Did you like the fight? I did. Yeah, it was pretty cool too. It was a fun fight for me. You know, there's a lot of animosity. Him trying to get in my head before the fight, just try to keep my head cool. You know, my hands were down in the fight. I realized that. Uh, I saw the footwork. It reminded me of the fight with Michael Johnson. Uh, just remain calm. You know, just next time, I'm just not gonna have to use my face for a hand mitt. And uh, I read the, your quote that you gave afterwards. I mean, you had said coming into this fight that you felt he was a pretty respectful guy and that, you know, there wasn't too much going on. But he said that he pissed you off going into the second round, and that sort of changed things. What, what, what happened that, that pissed you off? I saw his stamina go down, and I just uh, I weathered the storm in the first part, and I just looked at his eyes, and he wanted to quit. You know, he was holding on to my shorts, and there he was holding on to the cage, and I just saw that as, like, a thing that he didn't want to fight no more. So I just weathered the storm, just remember what Brock told me. You know, he's just, like, just, he's going to blow his wad in there. You know, and exactly what he did. I just caught him, you know. It was, it was a matter of time before he was going to get caught. I had a couple finishes that I was going to take. Didn't work. I didn't go for the Mars like I usually do for my back. I'm glad. We didn't practice it. Our transitions were there. Took it. Took his back. And up to this point, you've kind of been a guy that says, hey, man, I'll take whatever challenges the UFC puts in front of me. But I think you're 7-1 and one now in the UFC. I mean, that's the type of uh, position where people can start asking for things and calling things out. So, I mean, what do you see as the right next move for you? Top 10. Don't sleep on me. Hey, Ant, keep that belt warm, bro coming for it and you Khabib too we'll see you too but I have no animosity towards these guys we all fight my skill level is getting better do not forget about me El Kukui I will haunt your dreams we'll take uh, one more I think we have one in the back there Amber go ahead for Gilbert Melendez this is your first loss by submission what is that like sucks <laughs> you know it sucks you know but uh yeah I just didn't want to get tapped out you know but um I think it was just a little, it was just so much chaos right there, and he just synced it in good. So, sucks getting finished, man, but Anthony's good. But, uh, you know, again, just keep learning from this and try to remain a student in the sport. All right, guys, thank you for your attendance today. We'll see you Friday for the crowning of the first ever women's strawweight champion.